When I got injured, everyone was like, I should make a vlog or do this or do that. But I thought to myself, I'm not the only person that suffered from a long-term injury. Although my experiences can relate to some people, others' experience is just as important as mine. It's in unity that our greatest strength lies. The more individuals that rally your cause, the better. And that's why Injury Chronicles was birthed. So we have come together to share our experiences through a series of personal interviews. Everyone has their own story. Do not fear being the one true maverick you were born to be. Create your narrative and inspire. My name is Femi Ilasanmi and I suffered an Achilles rupture on the 8th of November 2021. And this is my road to recovery. So yeah, I think a lot of people know my story already, you know. Um, got into football quite late, really late to be honest with you. Um, ended up being at QPR. Um, from there, went and played League One, Dagenham and Redbridge. Uh, went to League Two, played. And cut a long story short, after a good five, six years in the Football League, uh, found myself in the National League. It was all doom and gloom when I joined the National League and turned, until I joined Boreham Wood Football Club. Um, it felt like a family, felt like I met a family again. And I've been there for the last four or five years, you know. Uh, we've had amazing seasons. We've had good FA Cup runs. We've reached the playoffs. And promotion is probably the next thing that we, we need to achieve. The year I got injured, um, start of every season as usual. Um, and then fortunately, we picked up form early on in the season. I think from our first 15 games or 16 games, we had 10 clean sheets which was very good and I pride myself on clean sheets as, as I'm a centre half. So we were on good course for promotion. Um, had the FA Cup run. We had an amazing FA Cup run. Um, fortunately, I played a part up until the second round. That was the last game I played in the FA Cup. And that was the final game I played before I got injured. It actually happened in training. It didn't happen in the match. So training and I've defended a cross and I've controlled the ball and I've tried to get onto my second touch and I've just felt a kick. So I've gone down and I'm like, I'm like to one of my teammates, like, why, why are you kicking me, bro? He's like, I didn't kick you. And that's when I knew something was up because you hear the rumours, you hear it. Like everyone says, when it feels like someone's kicking you and you haven't been kicked, you've definitely done something. So I knew something was up in that moment. And what's, what solidified it was the fact that when I looked around, everybody had their hands on their heads. And I thought, yeah, something's up. So I kept a brave face at the time and the physios were there and I said, you know what, if I'm going to walk off this training pitch for, um, and I'm not going to come back on here for a long time, let me at least walk off. I don't want to be stretched off, let me walk off. So I walked off the training pitch. It's the last time I saw the training pitch for over six months. I remember the day it happened and I was driving home I was driving home and when I got home, I couldn't get out of the car. I struggled. Um, I've never been injured long term like that before. So I still thought I could, I could move around. And I'll tell you a funny story. Um, I went to Wizkid before I had my up. I was like, okay, if I'm going to be out for a while, let me have my last fun. And 
that was one of the worst experiences I've ever had. Like, you already know O2 Arena, super busy. There's me on crutches in the midst of thousands of people, leg is aching, trying to get through people, trying to go up escalators, trying to enjoy the show. It was just a nightmare. It was an absolute nightmare. And on the way home, I couldn't get an Uber. I had to jump in the underground. <laughs> so <laughs> it was the craziest experience. It was horrible. And I, was, I would say that was probably the darkest moment because that was the point where I accepted, wow, you are, you are, you are a handicap right now, <laughs> like literally, you know, and yeah. So the process to getting back, I got told I had to have an operation. I went under the knife. Thank God the operation went well and was in a boot for at least two, three weeks. Maybe even longer, if I'm being honest with you. I can't even remember it now. It's all a blur, but it was probably longer. Yes, it was most definitely longer. But um, yeah, I was in the boot and the rehab process just started once I got out of the boot. If I'm being honest, I was ready to walk that road alone. That's just the honest truth. I don't put my eggs in people, I don't put expectations on people. So anything that's done for me is a bonus and I appreciate it, you know? But yeah, I was ready to walk it alone because I didn't want to be a burden in that moment in time to anyone. Um, my mum was amazing during that time. So was T, you know, my friends, my fam the rest of my family, they were very supportive in that time, making sure that I got what I needed. So yeah, from the people I expected, I haven't really got any complaints, only humbleness and just gratitude for being a part of this road to recovery. In that time, whilst I was injured, I tried to keep myself super busy as well. Um, you don't want to just sit down and know you can't do anything. So you, you try to keep yourself as busy as possible. I remember I've read so many books, like literally so many books, you know, and obviously we've got, we've got, we've got baller talk and we've got other things that were in, that were, that's going on. So I remember I just immersed myself I immerse myself in, into that, you know? And I feel like that's all I could do at the time. You know, that's all I could do. I remember speaking to my manager and he was like, my, my football manager, and, and he was like, when he got injured, that's when he started his coaching journey. You know, and now obviously fast forward, he's the manager of Bournemouth Football Club. Um, and I just used that to just, learn, study. I remember I'd done one or two courses. Um, I just done a lot, a lot of things and just immersed myself into, into a, a whole new world and just try to make myself feel as uncomfortable as I can in that new space, just for growth to occur, you know? I'm not trying to come across like I'm some Superman or anything like that, but, cause I do feel what everyone feels like. I feel, I was, I, was, I was upset when I was injured, you know? I was upset, so I felt the pain, I felt the anger, I felt all of that, but, and, and, and did it affect my mental health? Yes, it did, for sure, you know? Oh. How did it affect my mental health? It affected my mental health because I couldn't do, like, I, I couldn't shower properly. I will get frustrated over, over sh showering. I had to buy something to sit in the shower. You know, like, so those things do affect your mental health, but there's, there, there's two, in my mind, there's two ways you can go about mental health. I feel what everyone else feels, but I decided to use that as almost per se, a superpower to fill me on. You know how people feel fear, but they use that to, so I used all of that pain to fuel me to, to, to come back, to focus on the comeback, you know, cause I can't be showering ever like this again. I can't be a handicap. I can't be um, a liability where 
people are bringing me breakfast in bed. Uh, like, I want that option one day, like, I want the option one day, but, but you know what I mean, like, bring me, because I can't get up, you know, I didn't, I didn't want that again, I didn't want to, that be, I didn't want to be that burden to anyone, so all of that anger, frustration, pain, loneliness that I was feeling at the time, it was just, I managed to find a way to, to mix it up, stir it up and use it in, as fuel to, to get me back, that's, that's exactly what it was. When the surgeon said the quickest person to come back was five and a half months, I got back in under six. But we all, we all knew I wasn't ready to play ninety minutes. Let's, let's let's be real. I think it was just like cameo, just to let the, let the fans know I'm, I'm back. You know, um, the real the real game was first preseason game. I remember because I got back last game of the season. We had the whole season to to. Um, recover so I had more time to recover from my injury fortunately because the season had just ended so in that time the club rewarded me with a two-year deal which 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 I'm super grateful of and come back and train and train and I remember the first game was Brentford so I'm thinking all right cool Brentford then the squad list comes and it's like I have Antonio and Bueno the Silva and I haven't played for, now for like nine, nine months, <laughs> you know. So I've seen that team sheet, yeah. And I'm like, wow, this one here. <laughs> this one here is going to get me back real fast, you know. So, um, yeah, it was crazy. It was, it was tough. It was tough. I played 45. I remember after half time, I just went on my knees and I just thanked God and just gave him all the glory because... Without him, I spoke about my support system, I spoke about myself, I spoke about everyone, but without God, this, this wouldn't have been possible. I'll be honest with you. He's the reason that I could manage like the mental toll it took on me. He kept me strong, you know. He gave me wisdom, so I just gave him all the glory. I just went down on my knees and just thanked him. Like, where I've come from, I'm not trying to dwell into it too much, where I've come from, it could have been a different story. It could have been, I don't know. And and that and, and what what helped me get over the injury very like very kind of fast, very fast was the fact that I was thinking if I was living another life, this time out could have been time out in prison or time out from getting stabbed. Like this is probably the lesser of two evils. So the moment that hit me, it was like oh. I'm still blessed, like, you know, I'm still blessed. I'm, I'm living my dream. I'm just injured. That's all it is. But I'll get back. And, and that, that really helped with the, with, with the road to recovery. If you know your story, if you know why you were born on this earth, if you know your purpose, you know, if you know why you are you, you will just understand that it's just another chapter in the book. It's just another chapter. And it's not the end of the book. God is amazing. The human body is crazy. I mean, crazy. And the mind, your mind is everything. You know, if you thought I was confident then, me beating this, you need to know how confident I am now. <laughs> Do you understand? What is, it's, it's, it's incredible. So I feel like, it's taught me so much that no matter how bad things can be, that like I was injured like not that long ago, but we're here now shooting Injury Chronicles. <laughs> Do you understand? Like, man really turned my pain to my power, you know? So yeah, every setback is really meant to set, set you up for a major comeback if you actually use it the right way, you know? If you use your pain as your power the right way, it can birth amazing things. And that's what I've learned from my injury. <laughs> hey, come on, we done.
I know. <laughs> no, there was not. There was not at one point I, I doubted my recovery because I went. I if someone told me to do this, one rep of ten, I'm doing a rep of twenty. I'm making sure I've got everything covered.